Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, and today I'm going to show you how to import texture maps into Blender 3. Now I have done one of these previously, but I did get a lot of messages and things like that saying you still don't understand how to actually import them. So here is the ultimate guide on how to import all texture maps. And I want this actual guide to be fully inclusive, so please save this and share it as I'm sure in the future you'll be coming back to use it. Down at the bottom, I'll also put timestamps to the different setups. This will include the basic texture maps, ambient occlusion, opacity, emission, displacement, and finally glass. I'll make everything quick and easy to follow along so you can take screenshots if you need to. And all that I ask is you give this video a like, you share, and you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, everyone, so let's get started with importing texture maps into Blender, the ultimate guide. So here we are in Blender, and the first one I'd want to do is the basic texture map. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you that I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to Defaults, I'm going to load up my factory settings just to make sure that we're dealing with the same setup as what you might be doing. Next of all, what I want to do then is I want to come over to the shading panel and you'll see that if I come to my principle, which is my material, that if I come over and I press Control, Shift and T, nothing actually happens. And the reason for that is first of all, we want to come to edit, come down to preferences, and the one add-on that you want to bring in is called the Node Wrangler. So go to search, N-O-D-E, and you'll have one that says Node Wrangler. Just make sure that's ticked on, and then what you can do is you can refresh it, close it down, and now come back, click on your print board, make sure this is highlighted, and then what you want to do is press Control, Shift, T, and then you'll open up where your actual textures are. So here are my basic texture maps with some of the more advanced texture maps as well, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first one, Shift click the bottom one and basically click principal texture setup and Blender will do all of the hard work for us. So now you can see that I brought all of these in and I'm just pulling them aside so you can see what happens. All right, so you can see we've got a color, we've actually got a metallic, we've got a specular, we've got a roughness and finally we've got our normal and we've even got a displacement in there. So this is how they all come in and this is the simple way to bring in the basic textures into Blender. If it's not working, just make sure that you have UV unwrapped your cube or whatever it is by pressing Tab, pressing U, and just pressing Smart UV Project, and then you'll be able to see if the textures are actually working. Now, you shouldn't have to do anything with this setup. It's just the basic setup, and Blender will do all the hard work for you. All right, so now let's move on to something a little bit more advanced. So here we are in the ambient occlusion part. Now, first of all, I'll show you that you can see you have the basic setup, and then this is the ambient occlusion setup. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit, and what we're gonna have here is the ambient occlusion or a texture map. So if you do have a texture map, which is an ambient occlusion texture map, you can plug that into a color ramp, and then we can plug the color into an overlay, and to get an overlay up, all you do is Shift A, Search, Mix, RGB, bring that in and then put that onto overlay, which is this one here. That is how you actually get your overlay in and delete that out of the way. All right, the next one you want to actually plug into your overlay is the base color. So the base color, the one that you had, the initial texture, plug that into the top. Make sure it's plugged into the top and then plug your overlay into the actual base color. Now what you've actually got is you've got the power now to change how much ambient occlusion is actually in the actual scene. So you can see it can bring in a lot of ambient occlusion and it is based on the texture map. Now what happens if you don't actually have a texture map? Well, you can bring in a ambient occlusion. So if you press Shift A, search, look for ambient occlusion and you will find a node that you can bring in. Let's just delete that out of the way. And then all you need to do is you just need to grab your AO and plug it into your fact. Let's actually put this onto our render first, I think. We're on Cycles Render, and now if I plug this in, so the AO, sorry, into the FAC, and then you'll see if I bring these up, we actually have ambient occlusion again. This time though, it's based on the mesh, not actually on our ambient occlusion map. So there you go, that's ambient occlusion. And now let's move on to the next one. So the next one we're looking at is actual opacity. So it's the same setup, except you will have one that is an opacity map. So you can see here, here is my opacity map. And basically this map should be black and white. It should basically be showing Blender where the actual opacity should be and where it shouldn't be. 
And now all you need to do is bring in your opacity, grab the color and plug it into your actual alpha. And now what happens is, as you can see at the moment, we haven't actually got any shadows from this. So if you come over then to the right hand side, make sure that you're on your material and you will be up here, just scrolled all the way down and you'll see here that you have some settings. You can see here that the blend clip should be on opaque and you will end up with something like this when you first bring it in. So just hit this and put it onto alpha clip. And then what you wanna do is you wanna put the shadows onto either opaque, you can see we've got shadows here, or for better shadows, put it onto alpha clip and then you're gonna get exactly the same shadows from here. This obviously uses more actual computer power, so that's why you can actually put it on the other one. The other thing to be aware of, this actual clip threshold, if we turn this up or down, as you can see, if you end up with black marks around uh, your actual leaves or whatever it is you're bringing in, you can actually turn this up and actually get rid of those because it just increases that bleed effect on the actual opacity. Just make sure screen space reflection is on as well and subsurface translucency is also on in case you want to have a little bit of opacity through leaves and things like that. All right, so as you can see, that is the simple opacity setup and now we're moving on to the next one. So here we are on the next one and this one is going to be actual emission. So you can see here that I have these lights, they're very well lit and you can still see that we actually have some texture on there. So how do we do that exactly? What we want to do is we want to bring in a actual emission map. So just make sure that you've got an emission map and then what you're going to do is you're going to bring it in. So just drag it and drop it in and then you're going to plug it in to your emission. Now the best thing is about emission, if we come over to the right hand side again, you come over to here, scroll down, you will have one that says actual emission and we can control the emission strength from the actual material tab. So that's really great. So you can see here for bring it down like so. And you might also ask, well, how are you getting this bloom effect on there? That is because we're actually rendering this out in Eevee and putting on actual bloom. And you can see here that I can turn this down or turn it up and it has a really, really nice effect. So that is the simple setup for emission. And now let's move on. So here we are in the actual displacement setup. Now, the first of all, just make sure that you've actually got a displacement map. And then what you wanna do is you actually want to create a node with displacement on it. So if you press Shift A, you can do a search and you will find one that says displacement. So this one here, it will come in with all of these on there, but you'll find as soon as I plug this into the height, that one disappears and then you're left with this. Just set it up for now in the ones I've got it, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, and then I'm just gonna delete that now. Now, finally, what you want to do is you want to plug that into the displacement of the material output. And then again, you want to come over to the right hand side where your material output is, go down. And what you'll see is you'll have one that says displacement. So on the surface, so on the settings, on the surface, you'll have one that says bump only. Normally it will say it. If you change this to displacement and bump or displacement only, you'll see something actually happens. Now, at the moment, Nothing's really going to happen and if I really turn this up, so if I turn up the scale of this, you'll see it goes really, really crazy. And the reason for that is, is because displacement is based on how many actual polygons you have on the mesh. In other words, if you don't have any polygons, it's not going to be able to displacement uh, displace it because that's actually what it uses. So if you come over to the right hand side to your little spanner, add in a modifier and what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a subdivision surface. And as soon as I bring this subdivision surface in, let's put it on simple as well. And let's bring up the actual um, renders like so. So now we've brought up the subdivisions and now we can actually see that we do have all of this displacement on here. It's basically like tessellation. Now the thing is, this is very, very heavy on the actual viewport. So if you are using this, I recommend that you turn all of this off. So you can actually click on this button here. You can turn it off and then you'll still be able to actually render it out. So I recommend you do that. It will take much, much longer as well to actually render it out. And that everyone is how we use displacement in Blender. And finally, the last one, which is glass. So if I zoom out of here, you can see I've got a simple glass set up. So the first thing you wanna do is bring in a light path. And then what you want to do is bring in a map. This is a map node and you need to plug in the shadow ray and the reflection ray into these values. So if I press Shift A, search, bring in a math node, like so you can see then it comes in as add. 
Alright, so then what you want to do is you need a glass BSDF and a transparent BSDF and then all we want to do is plug these in in the way that I've actually got them here and finally then moving on down you need to take the principled so all of these textures that are already there and plug them into a mix shader and finally then into our material output like so now you will see that if i move a little bit to my glass we can actually see through there and we've got this kind of wheel that we've got going on there if i turn this all the way up you will see that it takes all of the textures and it makes this glass more like an actual mirror. And if I turn it all the way down, we basically get completely see-through glass. The reason why it's dark in there is because there's no light in there, but it's completely see-through. So if I press Control Z and bring this back to what it was, which is 0.492, you can see then we get a nice mixture between how much opacity is on the glass and how much of this grime effect all this texture is there now if i move on over to the right hand side this is the ior this basically controls how much as you can see if i move this down how much you can see that steering wheel just moved over there it's basically like refraction normally in glass or in water for instance the ior will be 1.450 we can also as well turn up the roughness and that then is going to make it a lot more mistier and things like that finally if we go on over to the right hand side you will see that we shouldn't have to actually um, change any of these options and if we come on over again to our render it you will see at the moment this is actually in cycles render and if you put this on EV, the effect is going to be nowhere near as good although you can still see we've actually got glass so you might need to alter these a little bit if you're actually in EV, as you can see in the IOR, you can see how that actually pushes that back and changes the refraction of the glass, the same as it did in Cycles. All right, everyone, so that brings us to the end of the tutorial of how to import texture maps into Blender, the ultimate guide. Give me a like, give me a share, and hit that subscribe button down below. All right, everyone, thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the next one. Happy modeling. Bye-bye.